Welcome to this talk about deploying uh, Camel Caucus Routing Cloud Native. This is a, with Dicton and Knative. This is a bit different, I would say, from the others, whereby in this talk, I'm not going to go in different details, but I will just give sort of introduction for, for important technologies that could help deploying camels and cloud native. So it can give you some hints how would you go to cloud native for, uh, Word in in Quarkus. So to start with, my name is Omar Safi. I'm an open source software engineer and talent. Um, also a Apache Camel PMC and committer. Um, I'm based in Germany here in the near the city of Düsseldorf. So talking about our agenda. So this is what we are going to talk about today. So we will just touch a bit of introduction about cloud native or what is cloud VM, what is Quarkus. I think Alexander will explain that a lot. Uh, we will talk about Knative and Tekton. I will see that everything with a demo. I recorded the demo, sorry, I'm not gonna do that live. I'm not that brave. So we will start with the definition of cloud native. But the definition of this cloud native, I'm honestly, I've always been confused about, but I reached sort of a summary or sort of, of important point. What does it really mean for us? So if you look at it, it's an open source stack, meaning that it's powered by open source stack. And that's what we see now in the Knative world. We have a lot of open source uh, uh, stacks that actually powering all those cloud native um, universe or whatever you call it. They are also, but they are also microservices. And this is very important. They are microservices in containers. This is a bit different in paradigm for the monolith that we get used to. So they should be small services in small containers. Sorry. And of course, they are dynamically orchestrated. That, that means that we shouldn't rely in one node. We shouldn't rely, oh, we, are, we have to deploy this service, this node, or we have to deploy this service, this node. We have to rely, we have to rely on some sort of orchestration to do that for us. And this is very important for the cloud native world. And of, they are, of course, optimized and resource utilization. If we, as, as, a, as a company, if I would go for the cloud native world, of course, I need to get some benefit out of it. So meaning that if before, if I was, if I had one node, like in the monolith world that you just run one system, uh, one software or one uh, service, now I could have, let's say 15 that runs in the same node. So we were, we, comp we, we push more and more, we utilize our resources in a better way. So we touch about what is what cloud native and so on. So let's see, first of all, in, in the first step to, to uh, utilize our resources, we can touch the uh, Graal native, uh, Graal VM. So what is Graal VM? So Graal VM, you can think of it as an evolution from Headspot and OpenGDK that we are actually used to work with. It's actually based on, on this, but of course there are a lot of optimizations that are being added on. It's, as I said, for, for the optimization, it's, of course it's also a high performance runtime. So meaning that uh, the design, the design of Graal VM was always the performance was always uh, the top priority. And one of the best part of Graal VM that has em enabled many other things, it's ahead of time compilation. So meaning that we don't rely on just on time compilations, we rely on ahead of time uh, before we run our, our, our software or we don't before we run our our uh, Java code, we compile everything to binary, and then that gives us a lot, a lot of, lot of benefit of having, that's our show layer of having very fast uh, system that puts very fast. And because of ahead of time compilation, we see it, it's all, of course, it will be ideal for microservice because now you will have a very micro uh, system that you run very fast or they are very small in size and they don't utilize many of the resources, like for example, like the memory. And this, this multiple language interoperability that allows Graal VM, for example, if I would write, if I write in Java, then I write in Node.js and combine everything through with Graal VM that allows my functions from Java to be called by Node.js and my, my functions from Node.js be called by Java. And that's what also includes general time mode. And that's what we see here, for example. You have all those languages in the top, and then you have the Graal VM that 
sort of that compiler that takes everything and then you then you can call in other languages. So that just gives us a very good benefit, I would say. Um, if you look at this small uh, diagram here, we can see in, in if looking at the JET as just in time compiler, we see that just in time compiler is very good at the throughput. That means that with more requests it gets, the faster it gets, and that's quite expected from JET, that it has a better view of your system, it has a better way of reacting to your system, but that actually comes with disadvantages because now with JET, you need to bring the, the compiler with you, you need to bring the infrastructure of the JET with you, you bring the infrastructure of JDK with you. This actually affects the startup speed, affects the memory footprint, and affects as well the packaging. So at the end of the day, it's more about compromises. So if you would go with ahead of time compilation, you would somehow win the other three, but somewhat you would maybe uh, sacrifice a bit of the throughput, for example. Although I think now uh, it's getting, it's actually getting better at the head of time compilation in terms of throughput. And if you look at it, how does it work for the graph uh, native image utility? So it, what it does actually, it takes an your application. So it takes the libraries, it takes your GDK, and then it has to run an analysis, meaning that it should know or it needs to know if these methods exist or these are being called or from where they are called. So to optimize everything. So there might be functions of plus not even called. So why even why do you even bother to put it? And then initialize all those classes and, and take uh, a snapshot of, of the heap and then write it out to a native executable and keep doing this. At the end of the day, we will have a very a, a very light VM called Substrate VM in the native executable that gives us this uh, ability to run those binaries that being uh, already uh, initialized from the snapshot. So, sorry, I'm being very quite fast, but just to catch up with the time. So now we finish from GraalVM. As you said, this is just an introduction. Why do we need it and all that? We will get to Quarkus, and I think many of you already know why do we need it. Um, but I will just give this small introduction here. So uh, if you look at this, I mean, that's actually from, from Klaus and Andreas. And uh, I, like, I like this graph because it describes the problem that we have now and uh, sometimes. So if you look at this graph here, or this draw, so we see here, here we have a three nodes and one node that was a traditional Java stack that you could have only four. I could, maybe it could even less if you would go with something like Spring or something like this. And then you have something like Node, which takes more, your node takes more. And then you have something like Go, which is very optimized. And remember, we talked about utilization and also saving the cost. So as, as a company, if I would save more uh, by just writing my application in Go, Node.js, and put it all in the node rather than having it in, in, in Java, right? But this is what something like Grad, also Quarkus want to solve. We want to make also Java more, like I would say, more friendly for the cloud native world. And also we have this uh, scaling problem, meaning that, as we said before, we have dynamically orchestrated and also utilized. So meaning that, for example, if my system doesn't get, or my software or my endpoint or my route doesn't get any requests, so that means why do I need to have it? So I need to just scale it down. But then I had one request. Then I have to be very fast to scale it up, so to react and this kind of request. And this is here the problems that obviously we had. I mean, that I would say not obviously, but yeah, actually, yeah, we are, we have this kind of problem. So we have we need to solve this kind of problem: scaling up, scaling down, or scale to zero with the native um, with the native uh, method now. So. Then comes in Quarkus. So Quarkus, it was built as, I would say, it's more of, I wouldn't say like a framework, more of, of to my, more for stack Java framework, I wouldn't say also framework. Uh, but this is like from the beginning, it was meant to be like targeting Kubernetes. It was meant to be like in the cloud. It was targeting to have it, it was targeting the software that our cloud native world with very light framework with very light Java that runs in containers or whatever. 
And because of that, as I said, it it is actually a container first, as I explained before, because obviously uh, it is actually Kubernetes native. So obviously it has to be container first. The, third, the container is the first class citizen here in Quarkus. And of course, and this is one of the best, the best, best, best part of Quarkus that utilizes the cross VM native image. Because what what does it mean that if I if I would write my application using Quarkus, I could guarantee this application will be compiled natively. So I don't need to worry about oh okay because oh, okay is this going to compile it in crawl or it's not going to be compiled in crawl. But if I will use the extensions of Quarkus, I could be at least guaranteed that. It will be compiled without any problems. Of oh, maybe there's some problems. Who knows? And if you, this is this is just a screenshot from the website of Quarkus. And if you look at how the performance is actually very very impressive, I would say. For example, like uh, the rest is is like um, the, the memory. For example, 12 megabyte in 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 in, uh, in, in comparison with with seven, uh, 73 uh, megabytes for Quarkus. With GPM and with native is 12 megabyte. This is very, very, I would say, very uh, impressive. It same goes for the response time. And because of it, in, in Camel we want to utilize this. So let's say, okay, we have to utilize this. I mean, this is very impressive. So the Camel Quarkus uh, project was born to utilize the Quarkus runtime to run the Camel components and Camel routes. So meaning that you will get all the goodies out of Quarkus, like all the performance optimizations, uh, and also like the the head of time compression that that Crowd and Quarkus bring us and have our Camel Quarkus shop runs very, very, very fast, I would say, and, run, and make, make them run, I would say, in cloud native friendly world now. So, I did this small comparison. I mean, I think the Alexander comparison was also very good, but this is just the one I did uh, um, in my free time. So here, just we have like a small uh, timer. This is actually also based on uh, in Klaus's example. And if you took a, if you take a look at Camel Spring Boot, this is for my machine. Of course, those those numbers they could be different always. If we look at the Camel Spring Boot, it utilizes 400 megabytes. And it started in three seconds. Of course, this is now it was in the older version of Spring Boot. I'm pretty sure when when the the native uh, when the native support the GraalVM support native support in Spring Boot graduated. I think now it's still an experiment. These numbers could be could a lot. I'm pretty sure they could they could differ. I mean, they could be a lot uh, different from these numbers. And if you take a look at the Quarkus camera route. Here we see it utilizes 200 megabytes and only started with 0.9 seconds. This is now it runs in the JVM mode, so it doesn't write, it doesn't yet run in the in the in the in the ahead of time compression mode, like like the native mode. And of course, if we see the native mode, and we see that it only uses 30 megabytes and it runs only like three seconds, so which is like I don't know, it's just like nothing, I would say. So now we had we we have like I would say we have a very optimized resources and our Java software or services they are more friendly for cloud native meaning that they are smaller they utilize the resources better they are they don't they are, they don't eat the RAM so let's take a look for example of the deployment because we talked about in one of the cluster of the cloud native, they are dynam dynamically orchestrated. Of course, you would say I could use Kubernetes, but yeah, okay. Let's take, let's take a look at something that could be also utilized even better. So Knative is, I would uh, give a definition of it, it's a, sim it's a simplified set of tools to manage containers and computers, meaning that uh, you, it would make it more appealing for developers, it would make it more appealing for the, the for for DevOps to manage containers for NK Native, also a lot a lot of developers. I mean, basically, I really really I used to hate having all those hem shards and all those templates here and there and there because it's always very confusing to me when I was to deploy any I when I used to deploy any service at Kubernetes. So K Native allows you just to not focus on all those configuration here and there, those templates here and there. Just write a very simple 
uh, YAML file that declares your service and what you need to do, and then it deploys that, which is which is really it's really interesting. It's really impressive. I'm, I've been testing now in my production. It's, it's very good. And it's built as Kubernetes. Uh, it's built as uh, Kubernetes extension with the uh, with the custom resource definition. So meaning that you can think of it as sort of extension for community that could react. So for example, now for, for current resource definitions that we have in communities, we have something like bot, we have something like deployment, but communities, uh, but CRDs gives us those custom definitions. For example, in a candidate, if you had some custom definition of service, you have a custom definition, I'm not sure, of uh, eventing, uh, event lesson or something like this, which well, we'll I'm sure later, which means that it, it, it somehow somewhat utilizes all the Kubernetes uh, native APIs in it. So because there are CRDs, that means it doesn't have to be like everything k -native. All those k -native servers, they could also interact with non k -native servers. For example, if you have other servers that are being deployed with normal Kubernetes, they could still react and they can still work. So this is like, a, a small uh, overview about Knative. So we have a developers here that just write an API, deploy it to Knative, and then the user just use it direct, just use and consume those APIs from Knative, or use this consume those servers from Knative. And then of course we have the operators who uh, taking care of the very low level. I would say the operators here more or less something like if you go for service management, service service something like. EKS or something like EKS I don't know, for Amazon. So something like this. Uh, so now let's take a look about the main Knative components. So Knative has main two components before they used to have three. Now it has two. So serving is about deploying your application to Knative. So it, it's more about automating this deployment to Kubernetes using Knative. I mean, it's Knative itself. And also we have the eventing uh, component, which is about which is about having a common inf event infrastructure within all your services. So meaning that, for example, if you if you would have one service that write in protobuf, and then you have another service that write in upper, then you have a third service that write in JSON. So it wants to have some sort of common framework, not only common uh, specs. It uses called event, but also want to have sort of way to interact with all those events. So, for example, if we take if we take a look at the Canada serving in small details. So, uh, if you can take a look here, we deploy our app. Very simple. It's a normal revision. Revision one, just deploy, and then we have the user. The user is being automatically routed to our revision. Of course, of course. I mean, here this we have this network auto setup, but of course that it uh, that doesn't mean that we are off the hook. We still need to do sort of uh, DNS routing configure our interest gateway, but this is like one time thing. Uh, let's say now revisions will be scaled up, scaled down. That, that means in your service, you could define the rules how your service will scale up, scale down, or even scale to zero. For example, you could pick a metric like CPU or concurrency, whatever, from, from, from Knative until a uh, Knative OK. And this, just please scale up, and that, please scale down. Now, for example, let's say I deploy the second revision. Candidate will, will automatically migrate the routes to the new revision. This is, I would say, quite neat. And let's say now, okay, but I would like to have, I would like to do uh, an A/B testing. It allows you to do that. So meaning that you could do, we could route ninety percent of your traffic to revision one, and then. 10% of your traffic goes for revision two, for example. You could do something like A/B test or whatever you can call it. Um, let's say now I deploy revision three, but I'm still not really 100%. Uh, it still need goes through QA. You can still deploy this revision three with the tag, which gives you like a dedicated URL that you could use for testing or whatever. So it doesn't need to it doesn't need to influence other revisions. So you just the top of the revision two, just say deploy revision three and put this tag and it gives you like a magic URL that you could use it for your QA and for your testing. So now if you took just one minute, have some water. 
so now if we, if we take a look at the second part of Kennedy, so this, we talked about there is all the civic component and then now also there is the vending component. As we talk about the vending components, more about having common infrastructure for the events in your candidate or I would say the services in your cluster. So it, it has an event source. This event source, it's a Kubernetes uh, resource that producing events as a cloud event. This is very important because we want to have uh, a generalized uh, common specs among all the events. And we could also have an adapter, which for example, if you have an event source that doesn't write uh, in cloud event, you could have this adapter to do some, to, some sort of simple uh, transformation for your event. And then you write everything as cloud event to history post. And then you have the broker. The broker has something like event hub, something like Kafka, or I don't know, maybe it could be even a queue. Um, and then you would have a trigger. So the trigger you could think of it is just it's subscribed from the broker, the event from the broker, and then it will do something about it. It will, for example, it will filter those events from the broker. And then when filter those events from the broker, it will just send all those services as an HTTP pause to those to the to your services, sorry, as cloud event specs. So this is also so that means in your service, you don't need to have, for example, a Kafka client, you just have you define your own hook. That that will receive this cloud event, and then you can react on it in order to write uh, an event-driven uh, service in your cluster. So now we take a look. We we went for. I mean, we took a look at Knative, which is simplifies the orchestration, and then now let's take a look at something a bit better. I would say I wouldn't say a bit better, but let's complete the whole thing with it. So now we take a take a look at Tecton. So Politely speaking, Tecton is a CI CD as a continuous integration and delivery, but it meant to be, it meant to run on top of Kubernetes. So you would argue, so why do I need it? I mean, I would have Jenkins, for example, or something like this. Yeah, you don't really need it, but this is more, for example, let's say I, uh, as a company, I have, uh, I don't know, I have like a very big Kubernetes cluster, and I don't want that. I have everything there. That means I have like all my monitoring there. I have my logging uh, infrastructure. There. I have all the infrastructure already set up, and I don't want to. I don't want to bother of having another service, one of the servers that I want to maintain. And here where it comes, Tecton. So Tecton basically it will run your CI/CD delivery, but still in Kubernetes, still as a container, still as a services. So it, they will behave like sort of like normal Kubernetes services. It used to be part of Canada tools. I'm not really sure the historic reason why it left Canada, but I think it's about the evolution for Tecton because it went, it, now it became, it, it really evolved a bit further. And, and just like Canada, it is actually, also, as I mentioned, it's also built as, uh, as, an, as a community extension with the CRD, so meaning that it could interact with other non uh, Canada services as well, or even Canada services, uh, sorry, non Canada services, and also normal Kubernetes services as normal Kubernetes service. So if we take a look at the building blocks, so building blocks for uh, Tecton, it, it has a step. The step you can think of it is like, it just take a container and runs the command on this container using sort of command arguments. And this step is actually corresponds to a container. So you can think of it at maybe in Jenkins, yeah, just say, okay, take me this image, run this command in this image, for example, Maven test or whatever. And then the second CRD, I mean, all those are CRDs, step is a custom resource definition, then we have a task. So task is actually contain steps. So meaning that uh, it could, it could, uh, it could have like a, sequ a sequential, uh, sequential steps. So many, for example, you could have a step that, uh, let's say it will build your application, and then you will have a second step that it will run your integration test. So you need to have those as uh, sequential uh, steps. And then there is a pipeline a CRD. So the pipeline CRD, uh, it, it actually about having multiple tasks. So now we talked about step, we talked about task, but now the pilot wants to talk multiple tasks, but those, they don't need to be 
sequence. It could be like in parallel. For example, now I could have like uh, one task that will build and my will be built by the application by running a test and so and build the image. And you can I could have a second task that will prepare, uh, for example, the environment for the end-to-end -end test. So does uh, the end, for example, the end-to-end -end test doesn't have to influence, for example, my uh, my other task that building the image or something like that. So now uh, we talked about all those. We give everything we give all those hints about the cloud native and we give all those uh, introduction about sort of those technologies that could help to have sort of cloud native climate come uh, camel quarters route whatever so let's put everything as a demo but first i could explain what is happening here in this demo so we have a camel route that has just a simple risk component on top of uh, camel quarters and then we have a trigger so that Trigger that the triggers the Tecton pipeline using event listener. So the event listener is a CRD from Tecton that actually uh, runs in history sync and listens for the triggers. So and then it runs the pipeline. So you can think of it. So it's like it's actually it is actually it is actually a history sync that you would use it to 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 uh, deploy or to trigger a build from your GitHub using Webhook, for example. And then we will say. Then we will run a pipeline. The problem has two steps or two tasks, I would say, two tasks. One task, one task to build the route natively using Cloud VM native image. And we'll be using Kaneko to because we are building everything inside inside the container. And then the second step, we will deploy this route from Tecton as a Kaneko service. So you could argue I want to deploy this manually, but as if for the sake of this example, I just have it uh, deployed from the pipeline because I was just playing with my toys. So I would say how it, how it behave. And then when this is done, I would love, I just want to, Kennedy to give me an HTTP, uh, give me a, 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 a URL to access this service. So this is like the overall, this is the overview of how the demo would look like. So as this is as I explained before. So now let's run the demo. Everyone can see my demo, right? Yeah. So. Okay, so now I have here uh, a route that is a very simple route that actually has a hello and takes a text from me from from from, from input as a URL, and then we have my Docker file. Ah, I actually skipped it. Okay, here. So the Docker file here is just uh, that does the building or does the build of my crawl. Uh, my cron native uh, quarkers, oh, the native quarkers uh, application. This is actually, I took it, I used the one that was provided documentation for quarkers to build uh, your uh, your quarkers application inside inside Docker. And then here we have the pipeline. So the pipeline, as I explained before, the pipeline will contain steps right so if you take a look here we have the first step which is build and push here we are actually we are just building our application and then the second step we will start deploying our application to 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 candidate there are some other things here being uh, being added for example like you see here those from the bad context, uh, th those are actually bindings that have been taken from, from the bindings. So this is like, I would say, more of uh, details that you can take a look at. You can, take a, you can take a look at this example and you would understand it because it's, you can think of it as like just sort of input for your, for, your, for your pipeline. And then we have the trigger, sorry. So the trigger is sort of, as I, as I mentioned before, the trigger will, the trigger our pipeline. So if we if we go using using a HTTP for this example, I will use curl to trigger my pipeline. And in production, of course, you would use something like a webhook for your GitHub to trigger the pipeline. So as you can see here, so here we now we are we'll be triggering our temp and we will be triggering our pipeline, and we we have to need the data. Oh, 
which is skip here. And here we have our very simple uh, service of the ML. This is like actually the service CRT for Knative. It's if you take a look, if you see it, it's very simple. I'll all I did just the container and then the traffic. Here also you can you can define the rules for your uh, traffic splitting and how you want the traffic to be behaved. If you want to set it up for one service, you can do that as well with config map if you config maps if you want if you if you want to have it globally in your Kubernetes cluster. So and now we will deploy our we will start. So here um well, what I did, I just need I just needed to proxy my my cluster so I can trigger my build. So as I said, we will have a listener, which is an HTTP sync that the request uh, that accepts a HTTP request from me. And this is some dashboard. I think I did ah. Actually, I did request it already. So there was a curve somewhere here that requested. So I can, I don't know if I don't want to repeat it again, but maybe, sorry, this is a, uh, here is a C. So I think I pushed the request now. So now let's go back to our dashboard. So Kubernetes has this kind of dashboard that looks something like you would have with Blue Ocean and the Jinkers or something like that, that gives you all the steps of your, of your, of your build. And, and it's, of course, this would take some time because building a native image just takes a, a lot of time and effort, really takes a lot of time, a lot of resources sometimes. So I would just skip here until the, the build has been completed. Take like 10 minutes. My, my cluster is pretty slow. Uh, I think it should be ending now here. Yes. It is almost completed, I would say. Okay, now we saw the first step was uh, the first uh, task was completed. Now we start the deployment task for our candidate cluster. And now we should be able to get our URL. So this is one thing I really love about candidate. Uh, you would you would get it with something or you would get it in the command line or with using the kubectl command you will get some you will need to run something a uh, command called uh kubectl get key services so we would expect my vatican text from our service so let's do this um, so i could type So now we just need, all we did here is just to get the URL for our deployed service. As you say, it does that automatically for us. Okay, so and here, actually my service being deployed in Azure. So of course that this is my own DNS. So that could be different for you, of course. And here we go. And we see my Apache text is welcome. And this is, was the route that we are, we just deployed from our service. And yeah, so that's, it was actually done. Now I need to switch to the slide. Um, actually, a small, Uh, actually, the, the last slide was about uh, thank you very much and any questions because I don't know what's happening. Here. I cannot get the slide. <laughs> so, any question? 
there's no question on the chat. Well, they are asking for pictures of dogs, but that's not related to the talk. Um, I think hey. they're fine. Thank you very much for the talk. I think it, it has been very, very interesting. Um, uh, I will share the slides and because I just wanted to actually, wait one minute, I could try to very fast to find it up again. It's just sometimes we're annoying and can you see it now, right? Yes. Yeah. So any of these? Can we deploy? Is that? Yeah. I mean, you would deploy any service, I would say. But of course, you would have to reroute everything to, to the DNS. It's you can, it basically it's so you can think of can it a sort of deployment. It, the, the, the classic deployment that you would do in Kubernetes, but plus some sort of automation that you just write very simple service file and does it for you. That's it. Any other question? Well, we still have three minutes and a half, but if there are no <laughs> questions, I think it's fine yeah. to just move to the next I, session. I tried to rush it a bit because uh, I had saw, I had a timer here. <laughs> uh, there's a question. Can we deploy front-end application using can native? Yeah, the, this is, I just answered now. I mean, of course, we could okay. deploy any service. Then. Thank you very much for the talk. Thank you. And Thank you. See you in the next talk. See you. Bye-bye.